This fraction is remarkable, because if you write it out in decimal, here is what you get. That's right, Fibonacci numbers. And for this fraction, you get even more terms of the Fibonacci sequence. What's going on here? Turns out that this mysterious fraction comes from a specific generating function. And to explain what that is, consider the following problem. A box contains 30 red, 40 blue, and 50 white balls. Balls of the same color are indistinguishable. How many ways are there of selecting a collection of 70 balls from the box? For example, we can take 30 red balls and 40 white balls, but there are many other options. We can encode the information we have about the balls using polynomials. Here is how it works. We can take any number of red balls ranging from 1 to 30, so let's encode it with this expression. Similarly, we can encode the other balls. Now we need to multiply these three guys and the coefficient in front of x to the 70th will be our desired answer. This is because powers add when you multiply two x's and there is the same number of ways to get x to the 70s in this product then there is a number of ways to choose 70 balls. But now we do a trick. Remember Taylor series? Here's what it looks like for 1 over 1 minus x. If we treat it as a formal expression we can change the term on the left to get virtually any polynomial on the right. For our first multiple, we need to cut off all the terms with powers higher than 30. For the second, the polynomial stops at x to the 40th. And likewise the third. I hope you can see that it is easier to multiply these functions than the actual polynomials. So now, we can write our product as this. The bottom can be expanded by the binomial theorem. And remember that we are only interested to know the coefficient of x to the 70th. Simple combinatorics gives us the answer. So this is why generating functions are important. They ease the computation. Ok, let's get back to our weird fraction. Since we know it has something to do with Fibonacci, let us derive the generating function for the Fibonacci sequence. As a polynomial, this is what it looks like. To get the explicit expression for the generating function f, multiply by x and multiply by x squared, so we get a shift and a double shift. When you subtract the shifted polynomials from the original one, only x survives. So, this is what f really is. Let us now try 0.01 for x. We get our fraction. Well, multiplied by 100. But our polynomial is now this. So the coefficients, which are Fibonacci numbers, get shifted by different powers of x. Now, it is clear that there is nothing mysterious behind this fraction picking even smaller x gives an even longer Fibonacci sequence. Generating functions are truly amazing. We have seen their application in combinatorics and in case of Fibonacci they can be used to derive the explicit formula for the terms. Please support this video if you want to see part 2 on the generating functions.